Clinical and subclinical mastitis is one of the most frequent reasons for culling dairy cows. Mastitis is also one of the most important factors affecting the lifetime saleable milk yields of dairy cows. Chronic mastitis and irreversible damage to milk-producing tissue in the udder is a major reason why some cows fail to achieve their full genetic potential. Mastitis is painful for cows and a significant welfare issue. Good udder health means better animal welfare and better productivity. Product quality is also better, which improves supply chain efficiency. There is more milk to sell and the cost of production is lower and the need to use antibiotics is reduced. This film is part of the AHDB Mastitis Control Series. In this film, we will focus on how to import your milk recording data that you have already converted to a CSV file into the mastitis pattern analysis tool and work through the tool to identify the main pattern of mastitis in your herd, which will help you to work with your team, vet and advisors to make better decisions about mastitis management in your herd. Good records of clinical mastitis and somatic cell counts can really help with mastitis management and control on your farm. Here is James Breen to guide you through the process. So in this second video, we're going to look at using the mastitis pattern analysis tool. And for this example, we're going to take the CSV file we made in video one, Stephen's data, and we're going to go through from start to finish and end up with uh, our mastitis pattern. First of all, obviously, we need to come back to the AHDB Dairy webpage. We've searched for mastitis pattern tool. Here's where we downloaded the converter software for your CDL file. We've now done that bit. Scroll down to the bottom of the page and we can actually click on this download button and this will download the pattern analysis tool itself. I'm just going to save mine. I'm going to click save as. I'm going to save it onto the desktop here. Just save there and that will download the pattern analysis tool onto your PC or laptop. I'm just going to minimize the web page. Here's the pattern analysis tool. I'm just going to bring it up here to a more central location. I'm going to double click on it to open it up. You will get a few warning messages depending again on your machine. Uh, it's a, an Excel tool, so I'm going to enable editing. That's the first thing. You sometimes may have a security warning because there's uh, little uh, background files in this. So I'm going to enable content. And when you've done that, you should be presented with this home screen, the herd pattern analysis tool, and some buttons down the bottom here, the first of which says import CSV. So just to explain what the pattern analysis tool is, you can see here along the top, you've got some date ranges. The pattern analysis tool wants to work with 18 months worth of your cell count and mastitis data. So that's why we've got quarter zero, so the last three months, if you like, the three months prior to that, the three months prior to that, and so on, all the way back to 18 months. Down this column here, we've then got the sorts of information that we need to make a decision about the current mastitis pattern in your herd. As you would expect, if you look at cell count parameters, these are things like the bulk cell count, how many chronically high cell count cows you've got in your herd, but also perhaps more novel parameters like new infection rates and cure rates across the dry period using your cell count data. We also then have clinical mastitis parameters. As you would expect, the actual clinical mastitis incidence rate, for example, how many cases you're reporting per 100 cows in the herd in a year, but also some of the more novel parameters, for example, how many new cases are appearing in the first 30 days after calving. We know these are very likely to be caused by dry period origin infections. And finally, at the bottom, you can see the impact of heifers. It's really important to get a handle on the percentage of heifers that carve in with a high cell count, for example, here the dry period new infection rate, because heifers can be a, an important source of infection into your herd. Now, when we started this, we actually started by manually typing in the information. But of course, with the CDL converter tool, you can do this automatically. We've made the CSV file of your information. And if I click on import CSV, I can go and find on the desktop 
I saved Stephen's CSV file. This was the file I made of Stephen's data in CSV format. I'm going to double click on that and you can see immediately the tool is populated with all the information about Stephen's herd. I've got his bulk cell count going back 18 months in blocks of three months working backwards from the 11th of March. That was the date we selected to work backwards from. So you can immediately get a handle on how many chronically high cell count cows this herd has, what the cure rate is across the dry period, what the mastitis rate in this herd, and the impact of heifers. But of course, at the moment, we're just presented with a table of indices and numbers. Let's move on. Hit the next button down here, and we can then get a sense of the quality of the data. This is really important when we're deciding on patterns and using data of the information we've got, uh, what's it like, have we got enough information? We can see in the last three months, Stephen has only done two milk recordings, but in the three months prior to that, there were three milk recordings and so on. So we've clearly got enough milk recording information. Stephen is an all year round calving herd. So in all of the three month periods, we've got plenty of cows calving into the herd. Important if we're gonna make decisions on dry period origin infection, for example. There are periods where there's relatively fewer heifers calving in, so we might just need to bear that in mind. And as you can see, the pattern analysis tool has flagged that up. We just need to interpret some of the heifer data with a bit of care, given that in some periods, there's relatively few of them. And Stephen is reporting clinical cases to his milk recording organization. There's plenty of clinical cases appearing in these three month blocks, so we have adequate mastitis data available as well. I'm just then going to hit the next button. And this is the final screen for the pattern tool, having imported your CSV data, having checked the quality of that data, we're then presented with the current mastitis pattern. Down the side here, we've got the key patterns that we need to decide on. Has Stephen got a contagious mastitis pattern where infection is being predominantly spread between cows? Has Stephen got an environmental mastitis pattern where the dry period is particularly important? Or is it an environmental mastitis pattern where infections in lactation is more important? Has Stephen got specific heifer issues? Or are there specific issues with mastitis recurrence, for example, where we might be concerned about cures? And then across here, we've got current, in other words, the last three months. We've got recent, in other words, the last 12 months or we've got historic further back than 12 months ago. We also have a column here for seasonality. These numbers are a weighted score and it is out of 100. And we've presented these as a traffic light system where green obviously is good, amber is a warning, red are particularly important patterns. And then we've tried to summarize this information with some key points. And as you can see, the headline here for Stephen in the last three months is that looking at his current cell count of mastitis data, we have some issues with environmental lactation patterns and environmental dry period patterns. We have some infection from both sources, if you like. What we can be very clear on is that the score for contagious mastitis is very low and Stephen does not and should not be concerned with contagious infection patterns currently. If we step back and say, well, on average in the last year, what's the predominant pattern? You can see the score for the dry period comes out the highest. And actually in the last 12 months, what this herd needs to think about perhaps and focus on more is an environmental infection pattern from the dry period. We also see quite a high score in seasonality. So there are some important seasonal patterns and it will be well worth looking at this herd's data in a bit more detail to try and understand if dry period infections, for example, are more predominant in winter months or summer months. Finally, we can click here for more information. So there is a glossary of terms. So if perhaps you want to refresh your memory on uh, how we define what a chronically high cell count cow is or what a cure rate across the dry period is, please do click here and read this. If you scroll down a bit further, we've then tried to present some helpful hints on perhaps what to do with the output of the tool. So for example, for Stephen, if we're saying in the last year, 
he has a predominant pattern with environmental infection across the dry period. Where could Stephen focus on in terms of management? Is this dry cow groups at pasture? Is this more bedding up? Is we need to think about ventilation or loafing space? There's some ideas here, given the pattern that the tool presents, where herds and their advisors should focus on. I'm just going to click the back button and that returns me to the main output from the tool. There are some references, so you can click here to find some further information. And finally, you can save a printable report in PDF format. So if you want to keep the output of this uh, period of time, we can save that, have a chat with Stephen and say, well, based on the latest data to the end of March, this is the mastitis pattern for your herd. So there we are, some examples of different herds and different patterns. There are help files available within the tool, so you can click for additional information and get a, a refresher, if you like, of the definitions of some of the terms we've used, like new infections and cures, as well as scrolling down to get some ideas on perhaps where to focus. If your predominant infection pattern is one of environmental infection in, across the dry period, or in lactation, or whether your pattern is more contagious, some ideas on where to focus. Finally, where you downloaded the tool from on the AHDB website, you will also be able to download a PDF help file where you can have full instructions from start to finish on how to use the tool. In summary, you should now be aware of how to download the mastitis pattern analysis tool from the AHDB Dairy website and understand how to import either a CSV file or input the data manually. You should also feel confident to work through the tool and produce the specific mastitis pattern for your herd. Working with your vet and advisors to develop a plan to address the issues highlighted within the pattern is key. Look out for further films in this mastitis control series and resources. For more information regarding mastitis control and the mastitis pattern analysis tool, visit mastitiscontrolplan.co.uk or dairy.ahdb.org.uk forward slash mastitis.